After a stop in Dripping Springs, a convoy heading to the border arrives at their destination. Inside the rally they held in a Texas border town. And as voters in South Carolina head to the polls to kick off the Democratic primary season, we'll let you know how you can make sure you're registered ahead of the March primary election. And we've got windy weather to wrap up the weekend. We'll take you through the gusts as well as our next chance for rain in first warning weather. Good evening, I'm Nabil Ramadna. The search for a 19-year-old continues this evening. Cedar Park Police released this picture. The girl's name is Alyssa, and she was last seen leaving her home near East Park in Gupton early this morning. Police say she could be suffering from a medical emergency. If you spot her, call 911 immediately. The Take Our Border Back convoy is on the move and held a rally in Kmoto this afternoon. The rally was held about 20 miles northwest of Eagle Pass at the Cornerstone Children's Ranch. Hundreds of people showed up for the event, which organizers say is a peaceful protest against the number of migrants illegally crossing over from Mexico. The convoy left Virginia on Monday and is traveling to southern borders like Texas, Arizona, and California. Dozens also gathered in Isidro, California, as part of the Take Our Border Back convoy. A rally was held there today, and next, the group will head to the border town of Yuma, Arizona. Governor Abbott will also be at the border town of Eagle Pass tomorrow, where he'll be joined by 14 other governors. He's expected to speak from Shelby Park, which remains at the center of a standoff between Texas and the federal government. Turning now to weather, joining us, meteorologist Nick Bannon with a look at some windy weather on the way. Looks like for me and you, we're going to have to put some extra hairspray in tomorrow. <laughs> a little bit of gel in the mix there, too. Yeah, it's going to get really windy here tomorrow. But first, let's take a look at this video we got in out of Haskell County. That's in northwest Texas near Abilene. The National Weather Service there reported a tornado yesterday afternoon around 530, which was captured here by Quint Lindsay. Of course, you can see uh, that tornado there. Here for us today, after a brief tornado warning last night with no confirmed damage, we had a couple of spotty showers that popped up during the late morning and into the afternoon. Mixed with the sun, it made for an interesting sight there from the Oasis restaurant camera looking over Lake Travis. Also brought in some rainbows as well. And if you have any shots of those, you can send them to report it at kxan.com. The last of those showers continue to move through our eastern counties. You can see the bubbling clouds there from our downtown Austonian weather camera looking to the east. I think the majority of the rest of us will be dry for the rest of tonight. But in Lee County and eastern Fayette County, northeast of LaGrange, a couple of the last showers of the day. And now we'll be dry the rest of the week. Weekend. Temperatures still in the 60s, middle and upper 60s on what was a warm afternoon with highs in the low 70s. But just wait, the winds are going to blow in some cooler air for tomorrow. We're already seeing the gusts picking up in parts of the hill country. We'll see those winds spreading through the rest of central Texas overnight, where we have a wind advisory for most of us beginning at midnight, lasting all the way until 6 tomorrow evening. Your forecast for this evening is dry and quiet and a little breezy. 61 at 7, 55 at 9, 53 at 11. The wind's really picking up overnight. So coming up in first warning weather, we'll take you through those wind gusts and into your Sunday forecast. The weather, though, staying mild. We'll highlight the temperatures and a warm-up before our next rain. Thank you very much, Nick. The official primary season for the Democrats kicked off today in South Carolina. Voters took to the polls today to cast their ballot for the 2024 Democratic presidential nominee. President Biden remains the front runner to win the South Carolina primary. His primary opponents are U.S. Representative Dean Phillips of Minnesota and Marianne Williamson, an author who ran unsuccessfully in 2020. Now, if you're looking to vote in next month's primary, you're running out of time to make sure you're registered. The deadline is this coming Monday, but if you aren't sure whether you're registered to vote or you still need to register, KXAN's Christopher Adams has helpful tips over on this story on 
KXAN.com. Overnight airstrikes by the U.S. on Iraq killed 16 people, including civilians, and left 25 others hurt. According to a spokesperson for the Iraqi government, the strikes also caused losses and damage to residential buildings and citizens' property and, quote, put security in Iraq and the region on the brink of abyss. The U.S. carried out the strikes in Iraq and Syria in response to the killing of the three American soldiers last weekend. A senior administration official told NBC News today that Iraq received prior warning of the airstrikes contrary to the claims of Iraqi government officials. Not your typical Coast Guard rescue. The unusual stowaway found while inspecting ship containers in Texas this week. And the state of California bracing for another big storm after being battered by rain and high winds for days. What the coastal state is doing to make sure it's ready for another round. A dog trapped in a shipping container in Houston was rescued by U.S. Coast Guard employees this week after she was stuck in the metal box for at least a week. The Coast Guard was conducting inspections when they heard barking. The dog was in a container 25 feet off the ground with old vehicles scheduled to be shipped overseas. Now, the dog was taken to an animal shelter after being rescued, and the shelter, well, they named her Connie the Container Dog. What a name. Well, people in California are bracing for an incoming storm here this weekend, which is set to bring heavy rain, strong winds, and likely flooding. The storm system slated to batter the Bay Area beginning later on today and into tonight, continuing through the day tomorrow, according to the National Weather Service, as well as our forecast. In just the last week, people in the Santa Cruz Mountains have seen mudslides and fallen trees. Tonight, people stocking up on sandbags, generators, flashlights, and sump pumps. California Governor Gavin Newsom announcing the state has put 8,300 boots on the ground across California, including firefighters and staff, as well as water rescue teams. So far, 7 million sandbags have been put in place across California. We'll be watching that storm. Uh, you can see it's already beginning to bring some at least light rain to coastal areas there. For us, we had some spotty showers, but it was a mainly dry day and a warm one. We got all the way up to 71 here today. Cedars medium, but trending lower. We've got low mold, elm, and hickory that we're checking in on as well. Don't be surprised if cedar starts to get higher as the wind picks up tonight. We'll track the wind and our next rain in first warning weather. Hundreds of children die each year from SUDC or sudden unexplained death in childhood. The victims range from toddlers to teens, many seemingly healthy, and doctors know very little about the cause. But now experts are making progress, and one local family who has been raising awareness says the research offers some hope. Every picture. That's one of my favorite photos. Tells a story. To this day, it's probably my very, very favorite picture of all of us, and it just sums up what a, how much fun he was. And in Moss Peratt's short life, there are many stories his family will continue to share. Just to have that moment where he stopped and gave me a kiss on the cheek was just, that's what, just hold on to that memory. In 2014, 15-month-old Moss went down for a nap, but never woke up. The cause, SUDC. To have him pass away in that manner, it just, it seemed impossible. Laura Gould, a researcher, she too lost a child to SUDC, but now works to put an end to the unexplained deaths. We find that the vast majority of children, like I said, are toddler age and they're sleep related and unwitnessed. She says recent deaths, which were caught on baby monitors, have offered clues into SUDC. Some of the children experiencing seizures right before death. We still don't understand why these children had the seizures. We don't understand why they died shortly thereafter. So we still have a lot to learn, but this is a huge, huge breakthrough in our research. The finding is critical for researchers and to families who have lost a child. I mean, ultimately, the hope is that we can figure out a way to first detect when this is happening with children, and then beyond that, um, perhaps prevention. While we have so much more that we need to do. Uh, it is, it does feel like a good uh, initial step in trying to get there. 
now vowing to keep raising awareness and hoping more can be learned. We've been passionate about finding answers to find out is there something we can do for families in the future to help prevent this from occurring. And going in depth, the Peratt family as well as Moss's grandparents have been helping to raise money for research. Each year they hold Moss Fest during the ABC Kite Festival. It's a way to raise awareness about SUDC and allow families to come together for music, food and fun. Last year they raised $60,000, all of it going towards SUDC research. First warning weather with meteorologist Nick Bannon. Just want to take you out to this view from our Lorenz and Lorenz 360 cam from Westlake Hills. Sunset now and today was at 609. So off in the distance, we're seeing the fading glow of what was actually a pretty nice day. I know we did have some spotty showers around, uh, but uh, also had temperatures in the 70s. So this is our Lorenz and Lorenz 360 cam from Westlake Hills. The storms and downpour uh, pours that brought some severe weather risk last night, including a brief tornado warning that lasted for about 10 minutes near 11 o'clock. Well, all of that's moved away. We just had a secondary boundary that helped to prompt some spotty showers and even a couple of thunderstorms here this afternoon. Nothing severe, though, and that is all drifting off to the east. And this area of low pressure will be moving away. But on the back side of it, we're going to get some gusty winds moving in overnight tonight and staying with us tomorrow. So tomorrow you'll think of the day as a windy day, even though you'll get plenty of sunshine. It's actually not going to be that windy for the first part of this evening, unless you're in portions of the hill country, say Gillespie, Mason and San Saba County. Counties. Those winds pick up a little bit earlier for you. But for the rest of us, the gusts arrive near and after midnight. And then when you wake up here, if you're up as early as 7 on a Sunday morning, it will be windy with gusts 20 to 40 miles per hour much of the day, potentially gusting up to 50 miles per hour briefly. Those gusts start to come down slowly during the afternoon, but then they really drop off as the sun sets and we head into tomorrow evening. Still breezy, just not as blustery. There could be some isolated power outages with these types of winds tomorrow. Generally, I'm not anticipating much in the way of problems, but not a bad idea to tie in or bring in any loose items you have in your backyard here today. We do have a wind advisory that begins at midnight, lasts until 6 o'clock tomorrow evening for almost the entire area. As far as the sky is going to look, mostly clear skies tonight. Good amount of sun tomorrow, but there may be some extra clouds in our northeastern sky as we head through the middle of the day, especially for you in Milam County, where there's actually a less than 10% rain chance for you. The majority of us, sunshine, scattered clouds and windy, and then thicker cloud cover comes in for Monday morning, but that will give way to increasing sunshine for Monday afternoon. As far as your forecast tonight, we'll call it down to 49 and increasing wind with a mostly clear sky and then sunshine and scattered clouds here for tomorrow with a high of 66, which is near where we should be this time of year. We do eventually have some rain chances to talk about. They're low on Thursday, just 10%, but then they bump up a little bit for Friday and Saturday to about 30% for now. We don't anticipate heavy rain, though, with those rain chances and the early outlook for rainfall amounts from the National Weather Service is less than a quarter of an inch. But hey, it's something. Looking at our first warning weather seven day forecast, you will notice more cloud covers we head through the week, especially Wednesday onward will be mostly cloudy. But even with the clouds, temperatures warm into the low 70s, even with those rain showers around late Thursday and especially Friday and Saturday. This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. Texas closed out this two-week stretch of facing ranked opponents as well as they had hoped. Texas faced TCU this afternoon, and thanks to a clutch performance from Max Ace, Miss the Horns left Fort Worth feeling fine. Texas climbing their way up the Big 12 stands. We pick it up in the first half. Avery Anderson, the third. Passing it over to Xavier Cork for TCU for the layup inside. 16-6, Horn Frogs off to a hot start. But then Texas comes back. Dylan DeSue with the fake and the bucket right here to tie the game up at 25. Now just under five to go in the first half. Jameer Nelson's Jr.'s pass stolen by Kendall Weaver who takes it back the other way for the fast break dunk. to put Texas up by five. Then a little later, Dylan Mitchell, he gets his hand in the passing lanes. He takes it back for a windmill jam. 41 to 32, Texas at that point closing out the first half strong. And this is all capped from by, by Brock Cunningham finding Caden Shedrick for the layup as time expires. Texas up by 11 at the break. TCU would come back, though. Emmanuel Miller with a nice move for the layup to tie the game up at 57. 
And Tyrese Hunter driving inside. He misses that tough layup of Caden Shedrick there for the rebound dunk. Texas on a 7-0 run at that point. But TCU not going away. Manuel Miller in the corner drains the three to put TCU within four. Tie game now at 64, and it's the Max Aceman show starting right with that layup plus the foul. 67-64, Texas. Aceman's parents in the stands loving that. And then he drains a deep three-pointer to put them up by nine. He scores the last 13 points for Texas. Longhorns win 77-66. Aceman leads the way with 21 points. These guys right next to me, man, they're the ones they, they've, uh, they earned this today. They had to come in. It wasn't easy coming into a hostile environment. Great crowd today. Um, these guys came and competed at a very high level. All right, Texas is now 4-5 and five in the Big 12, 15-7 and seven overall. They finished this five-game stretch versus ranked opponents with three wins and two losses. UT women took care of business against 13th-ranked Baylor Thursday, getting revenge for an earlier loss. They seek to do the same tomorrow against second-ranked Kansas State. They understand what's coming on Sunday and, and the opportunity that we have. We've talked about it. You know, if we're gonna if we're gonna jump back in the race, Sunday's important. And so, uh, is it the end all? I don't think so. But you know, just the fact that it's number two in the country coming to the Moody, you know, ought to be an exciting day for our fans. All right, fun day out of the dish. The sights and sounds of the Texas baseball alumni game with sports continues after this. Keep it here. For the first time in 2023, fans could check out the UT baseball team as they hosted some Texas X's in the annual alumni game at the dish. It was a beautiful day out there, and Texas fans got a chance to see the current team, but it was also a great time for the alumni. I love this place. I've always been a you know, mega Longhorn my whole life, so it's always fun to come back and show your face out here and see the fans again and step foot on you know the, the Longhorn turf. So it's it's great and obviously so fun to see my ex teammates and friends and stuff. So it's always a blast. You know, I thought the start of the year was really good. I figured out how long a full major league season is. Uh, I learned a lot. You know, I think. You know, that last two, three months, is, it's a lot of baseball. It's a lot of pitching. And so uh, I look forward to this year. I think I'm ready for not just to be good for a half a season, but a whole season. So I'm looking forward to it. All right. And uh, opening day for the current team is in two weeks. Awesome. We'll see you at 9 on CW, 10 on KXAN. Thanks for watching.